a 12 year old Macon County boy is on a long road to recovery after a science experiment exploded, leaving him with second and third degree burns. His parents are by his side as his mother also deals with injuries of her own from her attempt to save him. News 13's Hannah McKenzie spoke with the family today and we will warn you some of these images are difficult to watch. The McKim family spirits are high. They tell me if anyone can overcome an injury like this, it's 12 year old Barrett. I'm going to see if I can flip this around. This is Barrett here. He's he's been through a rough, rough morning. Barrett McKim lies in a hospital bed at the burn center in Augusta, Georgia. The 12 year old just hours out of his second surgery following a fiery accident at his Highlands, North Carolina home Thursday. A science project gone horrifically wrong, says his dad, Kyle. It involved a, a Bunsen burner and he was using a number of things. Alcohol was in the mix there and somehow in that process that got ignited. Um, and kind of blew blew up and back into his face. Hannah, he's burned on about 50% of his body. Um, and my understanding is that about 20% um, of those are third degree and about 30% are second degree. Fortunately, he was wearing protective glasses, uh, which certainly helped, uh, but he was wearing a synthetic shirt, which ended up being you know, a real contributor in kind of the, the fire staying and trying to get that off as it kind of melted, melted away. Barrett's mother. This is Caroline. Also badly burned while trying to save her son. Caroline, although she's yet to believe it, she is a hero and, and I think is a lot of the reason that Barrett's alive. The pair have a long road to recovery. That road made easier with a supportive family. We were several hundred miles away when we heard about it, and there was really nothing else that we could do at that moment but pray. Barrett's uncle, Stephen Schlotman, setting up a GoFundMe page to help out. I've never been through a tragedy like this, but I can only imagine the cost and expense. I think everything that we can do would help. Overwhelmed by the outpouring of support, Kyle at his son's bedside, just happy his boy is still here. So we're very grateful the Lord protected him and he's alive. And uh, we continue to pray for healing for his little body and um, and for his his future. We know God has a real purpose for him. Right now, the McKim's four other children are heading down to be closer with their family while they recover. You can find a link to their GoFundMe page on our website, WLOS.com. It sends the message that they may not care as much about ending homelessness here in McDowell County. McDowell County leaders have cut funding to a nonprofit helping those experiencing homelessness. New at 530 News 13's Anjali Patel explains where that money is going instead and how the leaders of the nonprofit are dealing with it. McDowell Mission Ministries was asking for $52,000 from the county to help them staff their overnight shelter here. Now, they typically get $17,500 from the county annually, but this upcoming fiscal year, they won't be getting any. Like many homeless shelters these days, McDowell Mission Ministries stays pretty full. We have waiting lists at all the shelters. And their shelters aren't just full of people from McDowell County, but on average, 30% of them come from neighboring Burke County. A person a lot of times travels to try to find help. Leaders say there aren't many low barrier shelters in neighboring counties that provide the services they do, which include substance use treatment. That's why they take clients from elsewhere and are now expanding into Burke County. They came to me and, and we talked and I brought it back to my board and, you know, the expansion seemed like a positive move. Um, you know, there'll be some funding coming from Burke. That expansion not sitting well with everyone, though. They believe that's why McDowell County Commissioners are now giving them zero dollars in their new budget. It was a blow. I was very shocked. When I reached out to commissioners about this, I was pointed to the county manager who has not answered my calls or emails. I did, however, get a copy of the county's approved budget. It shows $17,500. All of the funding that would typically go to McDowell Mission Ministries was instead given to three other organizations, which provide pregnancy services, preserve land, and reduce recidivism. None of the nonprofits given money in that budget are homeless shelters. 
I think it's less about the $17,500 and more about the commitment that the county makes to our organization, um, that they're a true partner in ending homelessness here in McDowell County. They welcome the county to rejoin them as partners and emphasize they'll continue their work regardless, helping anyone who comes to their door any way they can, no matter where they're from. There's no borders to people experiencing homelessness. For more information on McDowell Mission Ministries and for a final copy at the county's approved budget, head over to WLOS.com. A new drug detox center is coming to Asheville. Detoxing is often the first step in a patient's recovery journey, and it helps them to wean off of their substances. News 13's Anjali Patel shows us the Asheville Detox Center and why the founders say it is sorely needed here. Looking to fill a void, the co-founders of the Asheville Detox Center say this will be a unique resource to the community, helping people detox in a comfortable setting. The Asheville Detox Center is gearing up for its grand opening. So we can put them all right here. Founded by Jonathan Wood, who started the Oasis Recovery Center, and Danny Dillo, who founded the Asheville Recovery Center. Once competitors, now collaborators. Asheville Recovery Center and Oasis Recovery Center here in, in Asheville are two totally different programs. They're, they're almost polar opposites, but when you really get down into it, our morals, our values, um, and our care for our employees and our clients is what really sets us apart, and we, we matched perfectly in those areas. Also united by their experiences. I was the type of guy that just liked to party, uh, used pretty much anything. Of course, opiates were a big part of my story, uh, along with uppers and anything else. Dillo says he was in a state-funded detox program elsewhere years ago. It was a dorm-style room uh, where there was 24 men in cots this far away from each other. That experience, a big reason why he wanted to open up his own detox center. When clients come to Asheville Detox Center, one thing they will be is comfortable. I promise you that. The Asheville Detox Center has 16 beds with two people to a room each with its own bathroom and TV. During their five to seven day stay there, patients will participate in individual and group therapy, all while removing substances from their systems. They do offer scholarships for those who may be uninsured or low income. The founders say what makes this place unique to Asheville is that it's private or not state funded. And it's just night and day what you get. They say before this, the nearest private detoxes they could find to refer clients to were two hours away. It's taken some time to get to this point of finally opening one of their own up. A dream, years in the making. Around every corner there's been another kind of hurdle to get over, um, but I will say that makes this time so much more sweet. The Asheville Detox Center is set to officially open on July 11th.